say yes to this project? Oh boy, was it ever a no-brainer. It yeah. was so easy. It was... Uh, I love his movies, Clint. We, we, we made a movie together. Not one of his favorites, a, a film called Kelly's Heroes. Um, and I sent him a fan letter. Uh, I sent two. I sent one to uh, Steve Martin. But I sent the first one I ever sent was to, uh, to Clint for the outlaw Josie Wales. I saw it in London at the theater in Leicester Square, and I was so impressed with his skill to, um, his artistic skill to get to the center, the heart of something that was so diffuse, and to have it exist in every element, every segment, every part of the film, from the, from the humor to the tragedy. And so, so when, uh, when it was suggested that I might be a part of this film, I just sat and waited, you know. When they sent me the script, I didn't, I mean, I read it, I was thrilled, but I didn't need to. Um, Plus, you know, he already read it. Yeah. You know, his judgment, yeah. his track record. You got it, that's it exactly. When if he was willing to cast me for it, I, I, you know, normally my job, my decision is to, is to decide whether or not I'm correctly cast. But if uh, Clint wanted to cast me, then I wasn't about to question his judgment. Now... Switching gears a little bit, I was out here in the NASA Center talking to some of the astronauts. And they're so welcoming, so open to Hollywood or movies. Did you find that? Did you did you meet with astronauts um, and people from NASA when you were making this movie? Sure. Yeah. Did you find them welcoming? Oh yeah, and uh, but you know, it's it's said so in the film that uh, that they're. They're very proud of their work, and they're very disciplined people. It's necessary that they show it and that it be publicized in some way to um, to get funding, you know, because it's now become old hat in terms of Congress and whatever, and they need money. Uh, you know, the Mars mission was a perfect example of how much money they needed and should have had and it would have been successful if they had it, and it got botched uh, because of lack of funding. You know, speaking of funding, I did, I did hear, I read something, uh, the spacesuits that you use are not the original spacesuits. I heard those, are, those cost, a real spacesuit costs 10 or 12 million dollars for a suit. Yeah, they're expensive, yeah. I mean, that tells you how, how much they need funding, mm -hmm. because it's, it's an expensive thing mm -hmm. for people out in space. Now, before you made this movie, were you a uh, avid NASA observer. Uh, was that something of your interest? Or no, my interest is reading, reading and, uh, and the 14th century and Pete Sampras. Uh, I, I, I love watching that man play and I would love to have a peek at Tiger Woods in the, in the, in the British Open today. But sure, every kind of event that happened with NASA and I knew I, you know, the difference between metric and duodecimal systems in the, mm -hmm. in the kind of mix-up that happened with Hughes and, uh, and the Explorer. Uh, but of course, they're, they're people that are to be admired greatly. I, would just, I, would, I should not assume, but I would assume that making a movie like this is interesting because you, you get to get inside and see things oh, that you could never see. It's incredible, you know. It's incredible to get up that gantry by the space shuttle. It's incredible. Uh, to have these guys walk you around and show you things and introduce you to secrets and, and allow you to participate and involve yourself in their passion. It's wonderful. It really is, you know. And, and, and it's a passionate, monastic, difficult life that they lead. I mean, it's not monastic in terms of celibacy, but it's monastic in terms of deprivation and so on. One of the correlations, I, I noticed... Um John Glenn went back into space at 77, age 77. I don't know how old he was, but he sure 77, did. 77, yeah. 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 I wonder, would this movie really have been made if that didn't happen? Because you can, the, to suspend the, you know, the belief, the, uh, Clint's job as a director is to make everyone believe, mm -hmm. and there was a correlation there. John Glenn was in really good shape. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you were, well, the characters. Yeah, the characters were in good shape, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if it would have been yeah. made. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell you that. Yeah. I can't tell you that. It, I, I, you'd have to go back and look and see where the planning was. Yeah. I mean, it was a fiction story. You know? Sure. Mm. Now, um, 
to finalize. Wait one minute. Now, all you know, of course, all four characters are quite different. You would, you're more. Of, they describe your character. He's like la the ladies' man type. Your character in the movie. I mean, he has he have sensual involvement with women, and he loves them. You know, he loves, he loves the relationship. He adores them, women. He loves the way they eat, the way they talk. He loves their orgasms. He loves everything about them. He just adores them, the, the sensual life. But what's key to him more than anything else is his sense of deliberation, his ability to, to remain calm, to, to have a long view, uh, to be able to take a, an infinitely small situation and blow it out into a into a world pattern so that he doesn't become unduly upset. That's it. Okay. Crap. I hope that was a Thank you. Wonderful. It was